Hi guys, welcome to Kids Church Mobile. It is Wednesday and what a beautiful sunshiny day. As soon as I started to talk, the sun just glowed down on us. How cool is that? Hey, Gabriel is with me here today and he's going to highlight just one of the things in our July party pack. Now I wanna remind you that on July 1st, we're gonna be doing the drawing and there's a whole bunch of stuff. Hopefully you guys got some of the uh, flyers that show you everything in the party pack, but here's Gabe, he's gonna highlight today's single item. Go ahead. Uh, this is a Lego box. It has two characters. It has a fire truck. It has a hot dog stand and it has a tree and it has a lot of fire. So tell me, Mr. Gabriel Step, do you like to play Legos? Yes. What is the most interesting Lego pack that you have purchased in the last, ah, let's say three weeks? Uh, I got a giant golden neck. A giant golden mech, cool. Now, we don't have enough for a giant golden mech, guys. Sorry, but check this out. We do have from the Lego City set, it's called the Barbecue Burnout. That is going to be just one of the items given away on July 1st. So for anyone who wants to be a part of that, make sure you text me and let me know you're watching. The number is 352-789-4115. And I wanna let you know, today's word that you have to text me is peanuts all right peanut. so make sure that you text me today peanut so that i'll know that you watched this episode all right okay and by the way last the last week we had the words pineapple upside down cake and riley caitlin and bella were the first ones to text me a picture of a pineapple upside down cake so this week when their candy gets delivered, they will also be delivered a $5 bill. So keep track of the word peanut. It might come in handy later. All righty, what you gonna do? Text me every time you watch. What's the number, Gabriel? 352-789-4115. Awesome, thank you, Gabriel. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into today's story. Do you guys have your action Bibles ready today? All right, we are going to page Ah, I had it, 276. So today's story is probably one of the most famous stories in the whole Bible. Even people who don't, don't normally read the Bible usually know this story because it's so famous. Um, and this is going to be a story today. Uh, you've probably heard it called David and Goliath. Sometimes if somebody's like facing insurmountable odds and they're still going to try to win against the big bad guy, sometimes they'll be like, this is kind of like David and Goliath. So... This is the story that people are actually referring to when they refer to the term Goliath in meaning something huge. All right, so are you on your books? Page 276 in your Action Bibles? Okay, here we go. Our first story is called A Giant Challenge. All right. Boy, I am all over the place with my camera today. Ah! All right, here we go. A few years later, the Philistines collect their forces for an attack against Israel. Saul masses his army against them, and David's three oldest brothers join the king's forces. Now, if you remember, David, King Saul is the, is the king. But God said, Saul, you've done lost my favor. I'm looking for someone else. And he found a shepherd boy named David. And David was the youngest of like eight brothers. And nobody would think of him as being anything fancy, but God picked him to be the next king. Well, the older brothers are off away at war, and David, of course, is still at home watching the sheep. Nothing fancy yet. One evening, David comes in from the fields to find his father busy packing food. This is for your brothers. I want you to take it to them. I'll leave right, right away. What's the latest news from the battlefront? And his dad says, not good, and I'm worried. The not good news is this. A giant is fighting for the Philistines. All the Israelites are scared of him, including King Saul. If you look at that picture... You can see how big he is. The Bible says, I think that he was over nine feet tall, if I remember. And if you think about Mr. Dale is over six feet tall, it's kind of like all of Mr. Dale and then another half of Mr. Dale. Like we're talking a big giant. You can see why people were scared of him if they didn't trust in God. All right. So you can see David kind of walking up and he's coming up the road and he's seeing the camps and the soldiers and he sees the the giant Goliath. He's like, what's going on? All right, page 277. The guys say, what's going on? Listen to that giant. 
Look how big he is compared to a normal sized grown man. Goliath says, Why do you bother lining up for battle? Just send out a man who dares to fight me. If he kills me, then the Philistines will put down all their weapons and be your servants. But if I kill him, you will be our servants. Now, I love David because he's just a boy, but he's got a huge trust in God. He knows who his God is. And Goliath may be big, but God is way bigger than that. So he's like really offended. And he says, who is this unclean Philistine that he thinks he can defy the army of God? And the soldier says, that's Goliath. The king has said that whoever defeats him will receive great wealth, Saul's own daughter, and best of all, he'll never have to pay taxes again. But no man dares to face Goliath. Eliab, which is David's older brother, overhears David asking about Goliath. Now, if you remember right, let me just throw this in there. Remember when Samuel goes to pick one of Jesse's sons to be the king last time we read? Eliab, and he was like, oh, Eliab, he's tall and handsome. Surely he's the one. And God's like, no, I looked at his heart. You look at the outward appearance, I look at the heart, and he's not the one. Well, we're about to see part of the reason God didn't pick him. Look what David's big brother says to him. What are you doing here mouthing off? Why are you home where you belong, taking care of the sheep? Now, David kind of riles up a little bit. He says, Father sent me with here with food for you, and I'm not the one mouthing off. This Philistine is insulting our God. Ever since the prophet chose Samuel instead of David, Eliab has, I'm sorry, ever since the prophet Samuel chose David instead of him, Eliab has been filled with jealousy. Now his shame bursts into the open. You're just a spoiled brat who wants to watch a battle for your own fun. And David says, no, I just hate to see our God disrespected. I'll fight the giant. David's words spread throughout the camp. I bet those words spread like wildfire. If I remember right, you'll have to go back and check me in the Bible. You can look for this story. If you want to read it in the regular Bible, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But if I remember right, Goliath came out for like 40 days, over a month, every day, calling out his challenge for someone to come fight him. So I'm sure when David said he was willing to fight him, it's probably spread like wildfire through the camp. Okay, so bottom of page 278, David's word spread through the camp. Oh, king, there is one person who will fight, but the king interrupts him. Bring him here at once. David enters Saul's tent, but Saul does not recognize this young shepherd boy as the same one who used to play for him. Remember, he used to play for him on the harp whenever Saul would get really upset and stuff. Saul says to him, an untrained teenager. You can't fight a giant. He's an elite warrior. And David says, I'm a shepherd. I have killed bears and lions to protect my sheep. The Lord is our shepherd, so God will help me kill this Philistine to protect our people. Saul says, Spoken with courage and faith. Go, and the Lord be with you. You may even wear my own armor to protect you from this monster. So David tries the armor on. It says he can barely even walk. He's like, I can't wear this. I'm not used to fighting in armor. Besides, my plan is not to defend myself, but to attack. <laughs> I love David. So he gets rid of the armor, and you can see him go down to the stream down there, and he's getting some little rocks. He says, I don't need armor, just some stones for my sling. And it's kind of funny because he takes five stones, and he only uses one. But somebody's like, well, why did he have to take five if he only had one, you know, one giant to kill? I heard somebody say, well, Goliath probably had him some brothers David was going to go after. But we'll see. All right. Turn the page. With only his shepherd's staff and a sling, David goes out to meet the Philistine giant. The armies of both camps watch their champions as they face each other. I can see... The people voting for David are probably like, he doesn't have a chance. He's just a, a teenager against that huge giant. They're probably like, I can't believe all the hope of Israel is in this little kid. And I can see the people on the Philistine side going, oh my goodness, you got to be kidding me. They sent out a kid. But let's see what happens. Ha ha ha. Do you think I'm a dog that you can chase me away with sticks and stones? Goliath immediately starts mocking David. 
He says, I'll give your flesh to the wild animals. Now, the, the regular Bible, I love this part because Goliath basically starts really mocking David. He's like, I'm going to give your flesh to the wild animals. And guess what David says? Not, not in the action Bible here, but in the regular Bible. David says, you know, he says, I'm going to give your flesh to the wild animals. David says, I'm going to give the flesh of your whole army to the wild animals. <laughs> I love it. David just like comes at him confident and counters because he knows he fights for God. And so that's all he needs to know. All right, look at David at the bottom of the page. He says, you come with a sword, a spear, and a shield, but I come in the name of God who will give me the victory. <sighs> the giant laughs, but David whirls his swings, sling, takes careful aim, and lets the stone fly. I love it. Crack! Ugh! David has slain Goliath with a single shot from his sling. He runs to the body, grabs Goliath's sword, and holds, holds it up in victory. Let everyone know that our God does not need human weapons. This battle is the Lord's, and he has delivered the Philistines to us. And you can see the Philistines down at the bottom, they're like, It must have been a God. How else could a mere boy defeat Goliath? In terror, the Philistines flee for their lives. Spurred on by this sudden turn of events, the excited Israelites chase the Philistines back to their own land. And you see that God uses David and just his plain old courage and faith and good work with the slain. But he uses all of that to bring honor to his name. And I love it because David's not all about himself. He's like, no, I'm not going to let you talk about God like that. God will defeat you. And everything in David's heart was always to bring honor to God. That's part of why God picked him. All right, go ahead and turn the page to page 282. Now, how do you think that Saul is going to feel about this young buck who just took down the giant? How do you think he's going to feel? Probably pretty excited. The giant is gone. Finally, this threat to his kingdom has been dismissed. But there's going to be a little bit more that he starts thinking about David. Remember, God told Saul, you have lost my favor. I'm going to pick someone else to be king. Remember how he's watched everyone really carefully because he's already, you know, scared that somebody is going to defeat his kingdom and take him because God already told him that, you know, you're, you're going to be lost as far as your kingdom. I'm taking it away from you. So Saul has a jealous eye already. Let's see what happens with David. Page 282, the story is called The Jealous King. When the army returns, Saul's general, Abner, takes David to see the king. You saved Israel, David. From now on, you will live in the palace. Prince Jonathan will take you back with him. I don't know if you remember Jonathan. I love Jonathan. And Jonathan and David become really good friends. They both have that awesome faith and trust in God. Jonathan has just returned from the palace. He immediately recognizes David as a kindred spirit. Kindred spirit in David. And David says, thank you, Jonathan. God is my witness that I will be your friend until death. For the rest of the military campaign, Saul gives David lots of responsibilities. David excels at everything he's asked to do, and Saul promotes him to a higher ranking officer. David's reputation spreads, so by the time the army returns home, he's a hero. I guess so. He's the one who took down Goliath, and nobody else was even like brave enough to even go face him. Triumphantly, King Saul and his victorious soldiers parade through the streets. The women rush out of the cities to greet them and to sing their praises. All right, now this is where things get tricky. See the women in the back singing? They're actually singing. Listen to their song. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Uh-oh. They just said, yeah, Saul can, claim, can uh, slay a thousand, but David can slay 10,000. What do you think jealous King Saul's going to think about that? The very own song that they made up is glorifying David instead of him. Ooh, look at his face in that next picture at the top of page 283. Look at that face. The people's praise of David turns Saul's appreciation to rage. He thinks of what the prophet Samuel told him. The Lord will take away your kingdom from you. He looks at David. You can see him thinking. He's like, 
The people know David is a greater warrior than I am. Maybe he's the one who will take my kingdom from me. He starts becoming suspicious that this could be the one that God anointed to take his kingdom. And we know, because we read the book, it is David. Saul's just beginning to think it. He doesn't know it, but he's beginning to wonder. That night, Saul cannot sleep. My soldiers already love him, and now my people love him. He's really, he can't even sleep. He's so nervous about David. So one day, while David plays the harp to soothe Saul's spirit, you see him looking at, at David? David, he's the hero now, but he can't take my kingdom from me if he's dead. In a burst of rage, Saul grabs a spear. <sighs> Dunk! Oh my goodness, look how close it came to David. He's like, I missed. That's what he's thinking in his head, but out loud he says, Oh, I'm sorry, David. I don't know what came over me. It must be this evil spirit that torments me. You can see David thinking. He's like, it must have been an accident. Why would, he have, why would he have promoted me only to kill me? But Saul's jealousy continues to grow because he knows that David has the Lord's favor. Now, okay, girls, are you ready for the chick flick part? Not only does the Lord favor David, so does Saul's daughter, Michal. See his daughter in the back, Michal? He says, hmm, that gives me an idea. So he's going to use his own daughter's love for David to try to destroy David. David, it seems my daughter is in love with you. Who can blame her? You are the most popular man in the kingdom. But since you are a poor commoner, you cannot afford the customary bride price. Ah, sorry. You cannot afford the customary bride price for a king's daughter, so I will waive that fee. However, to prove your valor, you must kill a hundred Philistines. So basically, King Saul says, You know what, David? Sorry, I'm fixing my camera. He's like, My daughter is absolutely in love with you, but. I can't just give you my daughter. You're a poor man. I'll let you earn it. Kill a thousand Philistines. I'm sorry, a hundred Philistines. And I'll let you have my daughter. That way it'll be kind of like not for free. But what he's really hoping is that the Philistines will kill David. All right. David says, thank you, my king. I am highly honored. And you can see him kind of thinking to himself. King Saul says, you may be able to beat one giant Philistine, but a hundred of them should be able to kill you. A month later, David comes back in. Well, did you kill a hundred Philistines? No, says David. I killed two hundred. Oh. After David and Michal's wedding, Saul turns to his faithful son, Jonathan. Jonathan, I know he's your friend. But David has become a threat to the kingdom. He wants to take the crown from me. Will you help me kill him? Now that's a really stupid question to ask because Jonathan and David are really good friends. And Jonathan's like, Dad, what are you thinking? Of course not. I'm not going to help you kill David. And look what Jonathan says. He says, how can you say that? He's never done anything wrong to you. And with his battles, he's increased your honor and power. And Saul says to his son, you're right, Jonathan. I promise not to harm David. But in his mind, he's thinking, even my own son loves David more than he loves me. Feeling betrayed by his own family. Remember, his daughter's married to him and his son loves him. Saul resorts to conspiracy. You can hear them talking below. Wait until everyone is asleep. Then go to David's house and tell him I need to see him. When he gets here, we can kill him with no witnesses. McCall, why are you packing my clothes? You can see David comes in that night talking to his wife. And she says, my father plans to kill you tonight. See her in the other picture? She was overhearing it. You must run for your life. I'll delay his guards while you make your escape. McCall lets David out a back window, then prepares the next part of her plan. That night, you can hear bang, 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 bang on the door. And it says, let us in. King Saul needs to see David on a matter of high importance. Of course, McCall knows that really they want to kill him. She says, as you can see, he's sick in bed. I think it's contagious. Maybe she was like, 
might be the coronavirus. I'm just kidding. I'd let you in, but then you'd be ceremonially, ceremonial unclean for being near a sick person. I am so sorry. And what she did, the Bible tells us that she actually took like an uh, like a wooden uh, like a statue and put like goat's hair on the top of it, so it looked like David was like asleep in his bed. So they looked over and they saw him asleep in his bed, only it wasn't really him because remember he escaped out the window. So it was just like this uh, statue. McCall's bold lie confuses the guards who bring this new development to Saul. At first, he seems to take the news carefully. Oh, I didn't realize he was sick. We'll wait until he's healthy before we kill him. And then he changes. He goes, you fools, bring him here now if you have to carry him on his bed to do it. So he's just like schizophrenic. All right. But when David's men barge into David's room, they find only a statue with goat hair, with a goat hair wig in his bed. Yeah, that doesn't look much like David, does it? And then Saul says to his daughter, how can my own daughter lie to protect my enemy? And she says, he's not your enemy, father. I will think of a suitable punishment for you. So Saul gets really mad at McCall. And you can see at this point that Saul in his jealousy is not even able to see straight anymore. And I just want to encourage you guys as we get into this story in, in the Bible that jealousy is something that can really destroy us. When we start thinking to ourselves that everyone's against us, or we start thinking people like other people more than us, and we start just raving in our minds and building things up, and the devil will be quick, quick to really play into that. Don't fall for jealousy like Saul did. I mean, he already didn't have the favor of God, but once he opened that door to jealousy, he went basically kind of sort of really, honestly, went insane, and he went mad. And I just want to encourage every one of you to guard your hearts from jealousy. There's always going to be someone in life who has something else that you wish you had and you don't have. And that's just what it is. It doesn't matter how rich you are. Somebody will have, you know, a more beautiful spouse or a better car. You know what? It just is what it is. Be content with what you have and be thankful for what God has given you. And keep your eyes on Him and trust Him. And don't worry about all the stuff. And don't worry about being like more in charge than someone else. Let God just bless you the way that he wants to bless you. And don't let jealousy come in. Jealousy is an evil enemy. And you don't want a piece of it in your heart. All right? Okay, guys. We're going to come back on Friday with a little bit more of the story. We're not going to get like all the way to the end of the David story because it's kind of a long story, but it's a really good story. But um, when we come back on Friday, we'll hit some more of it and find out what happens with this jealous king. But guys, I love you very, very much. And I just want to encourage you as I pray for you guys today, don't let jealousy in your hearts. All righty? Okay. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you for everyone who's viewing today. And I just thank you for the story of David that teaches us courage and boldness and to trust in you. And God, I thank you that it teaches us that when we trust in you, sometimes other people get jealous of us. And sometimes people think wrong about us. But God, I thank you that you would just keep our hearts full of courage and always trusting in you no matter what other people think of us. And God, don't let us be the ones who get jealous of other people. I thank you, Father God, that our hearts would just be set on contentment in you, that our peace would be found in the fact that you love us and we love you, and our heart would be just set on you. And I thank you, Father, that jealousy would have no part in our hearts. I thank you for this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, one more quick thing before I go. I know this one's kind of long, but we did open Kids Church back up on Sundays. Not Wednesday nights yet, but on Sunday mornings. You have to come with an adult, but if you come at 10 a.m., we are opening up the smaller Kids Church on Sunday mornings, so we would love to have you. So 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, if you can make it to Sacred Fire, we are still having church and kids' church. So there's kids' church for the kids, there's nursery and preschool for the little ones, and then there's adult service for the adults. So I just want to encourage all of you, come on out on Sunday mornings and be blessed. Love you much. Don't forget to text me. Today's word is peanuts. Where's my thing? Today's word, peanut. Or you can text me a picture of a peanut, and I can get that too. All right. Love you guys. Bye.